Hello survivors. Most of us know that generating map heat in seven days to die can lead to a screamer. Once the activity like mining or killing zombies hits 100% heat, a screamer is usually generated and will come snooping around. So it is in your interest to be aware of what is causing Samara to pop around sooner rather than later. Especially in Darkness Falls where screamers can be quite an annoyance. This is a two part video specifically on weapons and screamer map heat. The first will focus on melee, archery and burning weapons and how they affect map heat. The second video in a few days will dig into guns and explosives. First, let's get one thing out of the way. There is no difference in map heat percentages based on your game difficulty. So if you are playing on insane, blowing stuff up with a grenade, you will increase the heat by 5% at each explosion, whether you are playing on Warrior, Adventurer, or Insane Difficulty. So, let's get into it. Melee and archery weapons produce no heat directly. All your melee weapons can be used to your heart's desire. They will not produce any heat. If you add mods to your weapons, like shock, fire, or cold, make an audible noise as much as you want to, and it'll make no difference. This is why players often prefer to use them. Besides being cheaper to maintain, shooting your guns while exploring a POI has a much higher chance in bringing in a screamer. Your ranged archery weapons also fit into this group where your bows and crossbows are silent when it comes to heat noise. A great choice for any assassin trying to avoid screamers. However, this is where we get to the butt part. There are at least two occasions when a melee or archery weapon increases the heat, indirectly. And it's why players sometimes moan and get a bit confused as to why in the world a screamer started appearing when they weren't even shooting their guns. First, a melee weapon will increase heat when it breaks something. And I don't mean when it breaks a zombie's head. So, if you wander around a POI pounding on things like wood, plastic and concrete, you can do this as much as you like. Use your spears, your axes, your hammers, crossbows, it makes no difference until whatever you are pounding on breaks. Then there will be a heat increase. Now even this is not as straightforward as a few items do not produce heat when they break. For example, a leather couch is wood and leather and doesn't increase screamer heat when it breaks, while a wood table does increase heat when it breaks. So it can be a little bit inconsistent, however, most of the time, stuff breaking means a heat increase. If anything, avoid breaking glass like the plague. It has a massive 3% heat increase when broken. As much as it sounds great smashing all those windows, it is the single biggest heat increase when it comes to block breaking. A crossbow bolt is silent in its kill, but break a block with it and you will now have a heat increase. Second, and I know I just said melee and archery weapons need to break something to increase screamer heat. However, there is one object that will increase heat and does not have to be broken, and that is metal. So if I use my crossbow to shoot this wooden block, it produces zero heat. However, if I shoot the metal car with my crossbow, it does have a heat increase, albeit quite small. If I take apart the metal microwave, an oven or a fridge, it produces heat with each action or hit. Now you can understand better as to why going through a POI without shooting a gun can still bring in a screamer, especially when you're salvaging the crap out of the place. So generally speaking, melee and archery weapons never increase the map heat level, unless you indirectly break a block or you hit metal objects with the weapon. When it comes to the two burning options in your arsenal, we have the Molotov and the Flamethrower. For early and mid game, the molly is one of the most effective area of effect options that you have for killing zombies. And they have a very low map heat footprint. They are great to chew through zombie health, especially when you're trying to take them out through walls. The Molotov does only 2% heat on each explosion. Most early game monsters can be killed with one Molotov. And by adding points into the demolisher scientist class, you can now even kill ferals with one molly. Using these is much better than most guns in the early game. The flamethrower on the other hand also has an area of effect damage but adds 0.75% to screamer heat which is nearly four times that of the molotov. With each click of the mouse you emit 0.75% heat so killing a crowd of zombies could net you up quite a high heat percentage. However there is a trick to this. Holding the mouse button in will mean you emit an initial 0.75% heat when you fire, but your weapon will not continue to add to screamer heat. 
So if you really want to use the flamethrower, don't just click with your finger and go click, 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 click. Just hold your mouse button in and sustain that damage without increasing the map heat. So when it comes to screamer heat, breaking blocks and hitting metal is the problem for melee and archery weapons. Hopefully this helps with a better understanding. The next video we will dive into guns and also do a comparison between shotguns and carbines. The carbine being my favorite, but is also a screamer magnet when compared to the shotgun. Until then, I will see you in the next one.